They're called pain waivers. Fans are literally signing their life away, releasing Death Clock from They're any the and all liability. We should exterminate them immediately. For over 300,000 fans have traveled to the Arctic Circle to see the legendary metal band Death Clock perform just one As song. you can see, Death Clock is no laughing matter. They're the world's greatest cultural force. This man is a danger to the human race. Death Clock. You are the 12th largest economy in the world in climbing, and yet you all are intensely private. Little is known about your personal lives. Why? Because... Are you urinating on my shoes? Yes, I am. The Metalocalypse begins in a world defined by death metal band Death Clock. Well, I got tore out and forced them to be in a show. Death Clock rules! My little sister didn't really like Death Clock, so I made her drink motor oil and she got real sick. I consider it an honor to be killed before Death Clock! Death Clock rules! Kill me! Death Clock had become popular enough to live in their own compound nation called Mordhouse. Millions of Death Clock fans have gathered around Mordhouse. They're waiting for the chimney smoke to turn from white to black. This will mean the new album is complete. World governments take orders from them. All cultural institutions revolve around their glorious metal music. Mankind lives and dies for Death Clock. Why do they have us right here in front of all the dildos? If they only knew how much we hated them. Look at that douche. Look at that douchebag. Look at that douchebag. Looks at that douchebag. Looks at that douchebag. Look at that douchebag. Look at that douchebag. Looks at that douchebag. Looks at that douchebag. 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 Death Clock is fronted by Nathan Explosion. We will make everything metal. Blacker than the black is black, times infinity. The visionary behind their music, Nathan, demands perfection from all Death Clock's releases. Dow Jones' decline is directly related to Death Clock frontman Nathan Explosion's constant deleting of potential new album. Before he was a rock god, Nathan grew up as a child in Florida. Nathan Explosion is a disgrace to the great state of Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor is being hoisted into the air. And after Florida's governor underestimated his constituency's affection for Death Clock. His daughter has just spit on it. Nathan was briefly elected governor. I swear to God, the fuck out of this piece of shit state. Now let me hear your guns. <laughs> this is Pickles the Drummer. Okay, ready? We're gonna we're gonna roll on this one, okay? <laughs> You're really recording on him? Pickle's music career started with his glam metal band, Snakes and Barrels. But when he needed heavier music, Pickles went on to become Death Clock's hard partying drummer. Let me ask you, what is the most successful drummer in history do to relax? What do the most successful drummer in the world do to do, 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 do relax? That's a good question. In fact, Death Clock once tried to get Pickles sober, although it didn't stick. What am I supposed to do with that booze? It's my whole life. You could eat an apple. You could always eat an apple. Instead of drinking. You can try instead of doing drugs, jacking off while you choke yourself with a leather belt around your throat. Yeah, that's a natural high. Yeah, that's good, clean fun. I do it every morning. On bass guitar, William Murderface. William Murderface is the off putting bassist of Death Clock. And despite the fact that he can play the bass with his penis, women still won't fuck you. Wait a minute, aren't you the bass player? Why are we even talking to you? Shouldn't you be like unloading equipment or something? Don't you need to put some water bottles on the stage? Don't you have to like steam their costumes? I love how bass players just pretend they're working as hard on stage as the other bandmates. Bass is the foundation of the band! Why don't you make like a bass guitar and be an audible? William Murderface's charts indicate a deep-seated rage, which is split off and repressed at its core. He blames others for his anger. He displaces his rage and its roots. He seeks punishment, castigation, and excommunication. This self-destruction is the only way to validate powerful voices he internalized as a child. This combined with his immense wealth and popularity... Hey, do you get some on your shirt right there? Hey, do. Blammo. Ow. Whoa. What a dick. I love to laugh. Hi. Hi. Guess what? You are a G MILF. That is a grandmother that I would like to. Squizgar Squig Elf is Deathlock's lead guitarist. The fastest guitarist in human history, Squizgar's instrument was practically bestowed to him by the gods. He took to the guitar to drown out his issues with his promiscuous Swedish mother. Oh. He also took to promiscuity himself. Oh. 
And other than that... You name something that has nothing to do with guitar. Go, 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 go. Uh, uh, the, the, oh, um, uh, um, uh, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, Toki Wartu! Thanks, you! And now I demonstrate the name of the string. The other Deathlock guitarist is less proficient. This one is an E, and uh, there's another E here, and the G, and the P, and the C. Those are what's called the fret. <laughs> Can't do this. Toki Wartooth is the little brother of the band. He maintains a healthy Scandinavian rivalry with Squizgo. Stop copies me! Stop copies me! Stop copies me! He often takes to childish fantasies, a coping mechanism from when his parents banished him from their Norwegian home. At the same time, Death Gluck was banishing their abrasive former rhythm guitarist, and Toki successfully auditioned for his spot, joining Death Clock, his true family. It just excludes me, I'm perp, you know it! How comes I didn't know it was Suits of Armor's Fridays? How comes I'm the only ones who didn't know about Kitty Whiskers Mondays? How comes you tricks me into dressing up like a banana at the suit? Uh, anyway, guys, uh, we've got three months to craft the ultimate metal record, so, uh, have at it, mateys. Uh, another lame sign-off from Charles! And no discussion of Death Clock is complete without mentioning Charles Foster Oftenson, their incredible manager. Charles keeps the entire Death Clock empire running, often risking life and limb to do so. Thankfully, without expecting any reward. Such an uptight dildo. Hi. Hi. This brings us to the Tribunal. They're the secret world government pulling the strings of society, and Death Clock's rise to power is their first real threat. They are led by the otherworldly Mr. Silesia, who is slowly developing the mysterious Project Falconback with his right-hand man, Vader Orlog. But not every member of the Tribunal shares his patience. This could turn into a majorism. We should immobilize them. Our peace is at stake. Sir, that is enough, General. I will not be challenged by you. General Crozier takes matters into his own hands, secretly convincing a silver-faced assassin to start a terrorist group of brainwashed Death Clock fans and their former guitarist to take revenge on Death Clock once and for all. But for his insubordination, Crozier is possessed by Silesia. Meanwhile... Will these bad boys of metal ever settle down? Maybe not. Remember Nate Becca? It was the storybook romance that took a turn for the tragic when actress model Rebecca Nightrod fell down several flights of stairs. Ah! Ah! I'm okay. I'm a- ah! Landed herself in a coma, but Nathan Explosion stayed by her side through it all. Until it became clear to the public that it was over. Rebecca Nightrod, still in a coma, was spotted in public canoodling with billionaire hotel heir Walt Perkins. Even the biggest rock star on earth is unlucky in love. Guys, I'm worried about Nathan. Dating a fan is, you know, kind of a no no. What's Sam's wrongs with that? Nathan! Abigail. Hi, Abigail. Hi. Too bad Abigail's off limits, you know, because that could be a pretty fun, you know. Well, who says she's off limits? Nathan ends up finding love in hotshot record producer Abigail Ramel Tindrink, the only woman who's not impressed by him. But Pickles also had eyes for her. And after Nathan destroys their most important record yet, I fucking quit! Pickles breaks up the band. <laughs> Surprisingly, to Celestia's great chagrin, and as Death Clock prepares to play their final show, Celestia makes his displeasure known. Celestia, oh God, it's beginning. Celestia slaughters the crowd and those close to Death Clock, and they narrowly escape. Charles leads them underwater into the safe haven of the Church of the Black Clock, a mysterious group revealed to have been helping Charles guide Death Clock. The church's high priest reveals that Death Clock are part of a prophecy. Dark gods meant to save the earth. And suddenly, Death Clock realize... You know what? I'm starting to think that we're the assholes. Pickles. Us? Yes! And they couldn't have realized it any later, as the Revengeancers 
kidnap Toki and Abigail to use as bait for Death Clock. Death Clock undergo an epic journey to save their friends, which takes them to the furthest stretches of their past, including a bar filled with resentful loser musicians that Death Clock abandoned in their rise to fame. Though one of the musicians makes sure to shake Murderface's hand, Death Clock leaves after making amends. Following clues to the Revengeancer's hideout, they are nearly trapped, but the High Priest saves them by sacrificing himself. And once finally reunited with their bandmate, Death Clock are inexplicably hit with the mystical energy that destroys the Revengeancers, leaving Death Clock alive to fight another day. And their former manager Charles takes up the mantle of the High Priest. And now we're ready to begin Metalocalypse, Army of the Doomstar. Oh, and one more thing you should know. His name is Dr. Roxo. He's the rock and roll clown. He does cocaine. I'm afraid that's all we know. Okay, now you're good to watch the movie.